Hey guys, this is Colby. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make the bicep plates for the uh, clone trooper that we're working on last time. So let's get started. So starting off, make sure that you have your references set up. We're going to have our front view and side view plates uh, set up. So here, we're just going to be focusing on this part of the reference. And from side view, we'll basically just be focusing on side view, like this side here of the bicep plate. So if you don't know how to set up your image references, you can watch the first video of this series on how to make the chest armor. I show how to set up these image references, so go back and watch that if you haven't already. So let's start off by creating a plane right about here. Just press shift, right click on your point of your mesh. Uh, it helps to go in front view, so click on the Y button here. Uh, it should say negative Y, that means we're in front view. Or you can press 1 on your numpad. So after that, so press shift, right click on the uh, reference right about here. And that will select our new spawn point for where we're going to create our mesh. Let's shift A, mesh, let's create a plane. Let's scale down a bit. Uh, we can rotate it a bit, quite a bit. But we can match the angle of the plates from front view. So we'll just rotate it pretty much R, X, R, Y. Just kind of rotate it like this. It's kind of hard to see. You could use the rotate tool to help you better. This kind of shows us the rotation. Pretty much trying to get it to a 45 degree angle, matching the plane here. You go to side view, move the whole piece right about here. Scale it down on the y axis, so S, Y, scale it a tad bit down. We're just going to match it the reference. So now we can go into edit mode on the plane. And we can start moving things into position better. Grab this bottom edge here. Like press 2 on your keyboard, we're going to edge mode, grab this edge, move it right about there, go to front view, move it to right about here. You just kind of match to your reference the best you can. Uh, sometimes it doesn't match pretty perfectly, but that's fine, just do your best. So we're going to start off by creating the front side of this piece first. So we can grab this edge here, let's press E to extrude, and move it right about here. See how it outward a bit. And just move it pretty much forward, just like that. And press another. Let's grab this edge here. We're going to extrude another face. Press E to extrude to this point here. Cover the entire front piece, or the front half of it. Go to side view again, and just kind of move it right about here. So just start creating some roundness to the piece. So now let's grab this edge. Press E to extrude. We'll move it right about on the bottom here. You go to front view and kind of move it outward a bit. Just create a little bit of roundness. And so now we're ready to start working on the back side of this piece. And now we're going to go to back view. Uh, we're basically going to adjust the position of this front uh, piece reference. And we're going to switch it over to this side here. Let's go to back view. Press 1 on your numpad. And then press 9 on the top right. Got to switch over to back. You can also click the Y button. Make sure that it says Y. Without a negative, and we're just going to move it pretty much right about here. Move it all the way over. Hard to see, but you can also move this piece forward a bit in front of the side of your plane. It's a little complicated uh, when explaining it, but it should make sense to you. You're just basically trying to get this piece in front of the reference that you're working on. So this piece should be in front or behind it, I guess. So now we're ready to start working on the back side of this piece here. So let's go into edit mode on the piece and grab this edge here. I'm going to go to back view and I'm going to turn on wireframe mode. Press Z on your keyboard and then press wireframe. Or you can press this button here. And we're going to start extruding this little arc. It's going to be actually really low poly. It's pretty easy. So grab this edge, press E to extrude, move it to this point, and just move these vertices into position. We're actually creating kind of like a triangle. Let's move it outward a bit. So go to side view, match to your reference. Let's go back to back view. And let me just extrude another half. So grab this edge, press E to extrude. I want to move it pretty much like this. So we basically have a little triangle here. Uh, you can go to side view, match to your reference. And so basically what we're going to do is merge these two vertices 
to the faces that we already created. So grab this vertice and then this one, hold down shift, select both of them, press M to merge at last. We do the same for these two. Go into vertice mode, hold down shift, click this one, and then click this one, press M to merge at last. Now we basically have our arc covered. Uh, now we just need to fill in this face here. Grab these two edges, press E to extrude, scale it out downward a bit. Go to mouse, and just kind of fill it in. Let's scale it up, don't make it too small. Just kind of move it back a little bit on the side view. That way it kind of moves inward a bit. And now we're going to basically add an edge loop right here. Control R, left click twice. And one right here, control R, left click twice. We can move both of these edges up to create a nice arc. Let's go to back view and move these up a bit. Let's move them into a nice position here. So it's better than just a triangle. It also helps us fill in space. Let's grab these two edges here. Press F to fill. And we're going to add an edge loop right here and merge with this vertice. Let's grab an edge loop right here. Control R, left click twice. Let's grab this vertice, hold down shift, and select this vertice up here. Press M to merge it last. Now we have this section all filled up. That looks good. Start seeing it's actually looking pretty nice. Uh, if we just add some extra subdivision modifiers to it, it'll look a lot better. Now we can start adding some thickness to this piece here. Uh, I can go in it, back into edit mode. You could add a solidify modifier if you wanted to. It usually works. But in this case, I'm still just going to do what I've done for all the previous videos. Uh, press everything. Just press A on your keyboard. Press E to extrude. And then S and scale it downward. Create a nice even thickness. Let's move it from forward a bit. Try to make this uh, thickness kind of even across all the sides. Pretty good. Uh, so now we can go back into object mode. Let's add a modifier, subdivision, turn up the poly counts. I might turn it up just to like two, looks good enough. Uh, and then we can start sharpening up these edges here. Let's go back into edit mode. Let's add some edge loops right about here. Control R, left click, and then scroll, pretty much move the mouse up a bit to slide it up. Let's do another one right about here. Control R, left click. Let's move it down with the mouse to this side here. It's creating that nice arc for us. Uh, we can also add some edge loops on the edges here. Control R, left click, and just slide it down. Control R up here as well. We can also do the same for the inside of this piece. Control R on the inside. Left click and scroll it inward. And so now we have a nice bit of thickness to it. If you want, you can adjust the positions of things right here, make it look a bit nice. You can also turn up the poly count if you want to. It's up to you. So if you want to clean up some of the vertices a bit, uh, I recommend using the smooth tool here. So you can click on this whole P cube. You can select any set of uh, edges or vertices, whatever you like. Uh, basically just click on this yellow circle here and hold it and pretty much, uh, slide your mouse to the right or left. It'll smooth it out for you. It's a nice way to add some smoothness to fix up some rough spots right right here. I'll use the smooth tool across the entire section here and just kind of fix it up, make it a little bit cleaner. Sometimes it kind of makes it a little bit worse. It's really up to you. Just use it with your own uh, decision making here. I think that looks pretty good. Pretty much now, just a final step to do. Uh, go back into object mode. Now that you have everything all sharpened up, uh, you can just right click on the whole object, straight smooth. Now we're going to look a lot better. If you want to move this over to your base mesh, you can just move this piece over and mirror it across. I already have one set up. Uh, but basically, what you want to do is to symmetrize it across, kind of like it is here. Uh, just add a modifier, set mirror, and set the target as the base mesh. And that'll mirror it over for you. If you, know, you want to know where I got this base mesh, I'll include a download link in the description below. Uh, it's over on CG Trader. You can go check it out. It's a free base mesh, uh, basically like Spider-Man. Uh, that's pretty much it. I'm just using it as a reference to set up all these plates on. I think it looks pretty cool.
Alright guys, that's the end of this video. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. Uh, next time, we'll be making the forearm armor for the clone trooper here. It'll cover this side of the base mesh and complete the entire arm. After that, we'll do the little uh, hand guards. It's pretty easy. Uh, anyways, I hope y'all guys found this video useful, and see you guys next time.